you can actually see. Second of all, um, I almost never stand up and read something at an event. And third, I almost never do anything that can be done in less than 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but let's try, and hopefully I can read my own handwriting. OK. This is called Sir James Quest. Once was a knight who set his sight upon a lady fair. Through her tower window did he spy her in her lair. If only we could meet, said he, I know our love would bloom. But I know not who rules this place. How shall I reach her room? But being bold, he strode up forth unto the castle gate, and pounding it with mailed fist, quoth, "'Tis here I seek my mate." The guardsmen there summoned their king, who came down to the door, and asked the knight in somber tone, "'What do you come here for?' "'I, I come to seek a wife,' he said, she up in the tower. I wed her now this very day and take her to my bower. The king looked down upon the man who stood before him now. With haughty looks, he stated bluntly, this I shall not allow. Excuse me. <laughs> my daughter, she is not for you, you poor and simple man. You need to win her by great feats, and I don't think you can. Now go away, you silly knight. Through this door ye not pass, and signal to his guardsmen there who tossed Jane on his ass. <laughs> now rose he up and dusting off, he gazed up in the air, saying, there's more, th there's more ways than one, I'll bet, to reach my lady fair. He shed his helmet, belt, and sword, and stripped away his mail. Then to the castle wall approached where he began to scale. A third then halfway up he went towards his desired mate, but then discovered that the vines would not support his weight. <laughs> again the ground did greet him hard. Again he groaned and rose. That didn't work, so we must find a new way, I suppose. That's not important. <laughs> he scurried to a nearby farm, and there a ladder borrowed. Now this should work, he told himself, or I'll be greatly sorrow. Beneath the walls he set his base, then glancing one more time, upon his quarry far above, he now began to climb. Up and up did he approach, she who left him besotted. But as he neared the top, the rooms he grasped, he found completely rotted. He flailed about with arms and legs, alas, with no salvation, and once again, the ground below gave savage ministration. <laughs> For some time he lay prostrate while stars cleared from his head. Then suddenly he sat erect. Aha, he loudly said. I think my thoughts have come upon an answer to this mystery. And if it works, I shall go down the greatest night in history. Then went he off for three days hence. But then came the result, as down the road he slowly came, pushing a catapult. <laughs> you see this coming, don't you? <laughs> Upon the green he set it down, and aiming it with care, he cranked it back and sat he down where stones normally fare. He pulled a lever, and the, and the arm now launched him across the space. Alas, the range was set too far, the wall greeted his face. <laughs> When consciousness returned, he vowed just one more try I need, a few yards closer to the wall, and then I will succeed. Now closer to the castle wall, again he wound it tight, again he climbed aboard and pulled, and went off on his flight. The view he had spectacular, as o'er the walls he soared, a hundred paces more beyond he saw the pine tree hoard. <laughs> Swiftly up they rushed upon him, like a great green wall. The first 12 branches that he struck did almost break his fall. Oh. <laughs> now on the forest floor he lay, lights dancing in his eyes, where far behind the castle walls did mockingly still rise. Now bruised and battered, Jane did know his hopes were finally sunk. So shrugging once, he headed home, and there became a monk. <laughs> 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 